What a wonderful Savior. What a great God we serve. He's good and He's good to all. He's good to all. He's good to all. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. You know, I was speaking something in the morning about how we need to uh, uh, build ourselves up with words of faith and good doctrines. Words of faith alone is not enough, but good doctrines are important. Where well, that's how we, we stay healthy spiritually. We don't stay unhealthy spiritually. We, we, we do things differently. We are different to the world and we, we do things altogether differently. Our actions, our words, our, our way of doing things are altogether different. So we're going to continue uh, with what, where we have uh, stopped and... Uh, well, we, we finally came with this scripture. Let me just take you to that scripture. Go with me to the book of uh, second, or uh, First Timothy chapter number 4 and verse 6. Uh, Paul is writing to Timothy and encouraging Timothy. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, which every minister would want to be, a good minister eventually, uh, nourished up with words of faith and good doctrines. Nourished up with faith, words of faith and good doctrines. And that's exactly what God wants us to be uh, nourished up with. Words of faith. Words of faith matter and good doctrines. We cannot go at a tangent. we got to build our character. And then also we need to uh, advance forward by our faith. By our faith. Well, there are people in the world who are also good in their character. Sometimes I've heard some Christians say, oh, I, I even find some of the worldly people are so nicer than the Christian. I said, you're making the biggest mistake. That's not true. But character alone and uh, in the world is not enough, but we need to build ourselves in the spirit, God's word, and strengthening ourselves. And also we, we will we'll, we'll continue reading. Verse number seven says, refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise rather thyself unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little or for a season or for a little time. But uh, godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of this life that is now, that now is, and also that which is to come. So it's always for now and forever. Godliness is profitable. Godliness is always profitable. Where you can be, you can walk in the spirit, you can do things in the spirit, you can, you can see how the Lord would lead you and guide you, and, uh, and how it can be for many, many years that you will be building yourself up to the extent that you will eventually know that you're in the will of God, doing those things that are pleasing in His sight. Those things that are pleasing in his sight. So we'll talk a little bit about the words of faith today. And uh, let me take you to the book of uh, Philemon. There's only one chapter there. Philemon. And the book of Philemon and verse number 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The communication, our conversation, our speech, words that we speak. The communication of our faith may become effectual by acknowledging every good thing. You don't have anything bad in Christ Jesus. You only have good we have to make up our minds to speak the right word. We need to speak not according to what we see in the natural, but we need to speak what we believe in our heart. What we believe is different to what we see. When Jesus came to the uh, tomb of Lazarus, he didn't say, oh my God, Lazarus is dead for the last four years. No, he didn't say that. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He spoke differently. Because the God that we serve is a God who, who gives life to the dead. Let me take you to the scriptures. 
to the book of uh, Romans, Romans chapter number 4 and verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, and called those things which be not, even God who quickeneth or gives life to the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And if you and I are made in the likeness and in his own image, we call things that are not as though they were. But the people in the world would not see it like the way we see it. Now when we were sinners, unworthy as we were, unprofitable as we were, what did we do? How did we enter into the kingdom of God? By believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We believed in our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And we were resurrected. Something new happened in our lives. Repentance was involved in our lives. But repentance alone didn't change us. It was a declaration that changed us. In Romans chapter 8, uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 10 says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 10. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession unto salvation. So what did we do? We believed in our heart, and we confessed with our mouth. Right? With the heart man believes unto righteousness. If we have to come into a, a right standing with God, I love the word righteousness because from, from the days that we were, we, uh, we entered the church and we started, we, we were saved. We know that we were saved by grace through faith. But we didn't hear the word righteousness much. The word righteousness was too long for us to understand. But when, when we came to an understanding the word righteousness, we knew righteousness does not come by our good doings. Righteousness only came into us by believing what He has done for us. And the word righteousness is always important for us because the just shall live by faith or, or the righteous shall live by faith. If we are the righteousness of God, having a right standing with God, let's make it so clear. Now, I remember when I used to preach in English and I had an interpreter with me, when I used the word righteousness, they were stuttering. They were finding it difficult because the word righteousness was too big for them to utter. Because they all thought a righteous man is somebody who puts on something. A righteous man is somebody who is holy and clean and who lives who have been living in monasteries and all kinds of things, you know, they kind of think, well, that's the only holy righteous man. But when we come to Christ, when we come to Christ, we are made the righteousness of God. We are made the righteousness of God. We are totally and completely changed. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, we believe that Jesus died for me and he rose again. And with the mouth, confession is made unto our salvation. So our salvation came to us by believing. And the word salvation has, has many other things that we need to learn from. The word salvation has a wide meaning. Not only eternal life that we have received, it talks about wholeness. It talks about deliverance. It talks about health and healing. The word salvation has. So just because I got saved by my declaration, it does not mean that I got to keep my mouth shut. I got to speak forth his word. I live by the word of God. Jesus, when the devil tempted him and said, Oh, if you're the son of God, why don't you do a miracle by turning this bread into water, in, in, uh, or turn these rocks into bread? And he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So words that proceed out of the mouth of God must come into, the, into our heart, and we believe with our heart, and we make a declaration with our mouth. We make a declaration with our mouth. I'm remembering a scripture in the book of uh, Hebrews. And when I read this scripture, it just, the Lord just brought these words out of the pages. And, and since then I said, Lord, you truly love me to the extent that you really want me to speak the right things out of my mouth. 
And it changed my life altogether. I said, Lord, I thank you. Uh, let me take you to uh, Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 15. Proverbs 23 and verse number 15. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even my heart, even mine. He said, when, you, when, you are, when you're a wise man, and when I read the book of Proverbs, it talks, it talks a lot about a wise man. It talks about a lot about a just man. It talks a lot about uh, the sayings of our mouth, words that we speak utter out of our mouth, right? It talks a lot. My son, if thy heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice. God said, I rejoice. He rejoices when our hearts are wise. Yea, my reins or my innermost being shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Our lips are important. Our words are important. I believe that every good thing that comes out of our mouth, every good thing, you know, we, we are tempted so much in life to just speak what we see. We don't have to speak everything that we see. We got to speak what we believe. Everything that you believe makes a difference in your life because you're a believer. You're the just one. The just shall live by faith. Right? So if I'm living by faith, then I ought to make sure the words that come out of my mouth, they make the difference to my life. I prepare my way by the words that I speak. We've got to be watchful what we speak because death and life are in the power of the tongue. If, confession, if by confession salvation came to us, how much more in our day-to-day -day living that the words that we speak, when, when, I, when, when we when get, get involved with people, when, when they speak some words that don't line up with Scripture, I, I don't want to fellowship with such people because I don't want to contaminate my life. It's important. People who speak words that are contradicting Scriptures. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm not talking about those who have never accepted Christ, but I'm talking about people who, have, who, are, who are born again. If you're born from above, then you have the nature of Christ in you. You have the nature of Christ in you. You have, you have life in you. You are different. Your words are different. Your actions are different. And, and if my words are lining up with scriptures, then I'm, going to, I'm only going to speak what scriptures tell me. No matter what people like, I mean, no matter what, how, how people take it, but I'm going to speak life. When, G, when God the Father, he saw, he, the very first doctrine that we see in the scripture, when God the Father, he came out and he saw everything was dark and void. And what did he say? All creation was made by his words. He said, let there be light and there was light in the midst of darkness. Let there be light and, there was, and he kept on creating everything by the words that proceeded out of his mouth. And how much more words should mean to us? How much more do, do words mean to us? It's, it, it's oh, it's all right. I just, I'm just joking around. I'm just, well, it tickled me to death. Why wouldn't we turn that around? It tickles me to life. It tickles me to life. We have these sayings and we think, well, they're okay. But all of a sudden, he gets tickled and he dies and he says, oh my God, he wasn't real. <laughs> he, he, he really made his way through by tickling himself to heaven. But not so early, you don't have to. You don't have to. You, I mean, that's, how, that's what we have learned from the world. Let's change it and say, it tickles me to life. There are many, many words that we speak. Oh, we say, oh, it's all right. I mean, after all, no, it's serious. Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So what's in the abundance of your heart? And see, out of your own mouth, you shall be justified. And out of your own mouth, you shall be, you shall be condemned. How do people get condemned? Because they keep uttering words. How, 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 how we, 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 we actually, we are, we are equipping the, 
devil, or we are preparing the devil, we are giving weapons to the devil to shoot us by our own words. He only has an empty pistol. But the bullets are coming out of our own mouth. And he's collecting them, and he's collecting them, and he's shooting them into our lives. The Bible talks about, in the book of Job, let's go to the book of Job. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, the book of Job and chapter 6 and verse number 24. Verse number 24. Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Lord, teach me that I may speak the right word. It's important. It matters. It doesn't matter to a worldly person because he doesn't care what he speaks. But it does matter to what we speak. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to hold my tongue. And cause me to understand wherein I have heard. Verse 25. How forcible are right words. How forcible are right words. The words that you speak, they are forceful. They either produce death or life into your own life. We love to speak. We are all good speakers. Every one of us, we just love to speak. We just love to enjoy speaking. That's nice. But let there be, let, be, let us draw the, draw the line somewhere down the line and say, yes, I wouldn't want to. You know, Jesus, he found it difficult to call even Lazarus who was dead. He said, Lazarus sleepeth. Let us go wake him up. And the disciples said, if he's sleeping, that's good. Let him keep sleeping. Let us go wake him up. Because he found it difficult to, to do things by faith. If he was, if he was, if he kept saying, oh my God, Lazarus is dead. Now what am I going to do? Oh my God, he's dead. It's almost four days now. How am I going to raise this man up? Now he said, Lazarus sleepeth. He even found it difficult when he went into raising La- uh, Jairus' daughter. And he went to Jairus' daughter and said, oh, she sleeps. And everybody laughed him to scorn. Every one of them laughed. And what did he do? He put them all out because they didn't want to agree. How could, how could you raise a dead when somebody is not willing to agree? You have a bunch of people who are, who are mocking at you and laughing around with you. He put them all out. And what did he say? He said he took the parents in because they, this, they meant business. The parents meant. You know what? Jairus came to Jesus and said, Jesus, oh my daughter, even by this time, she's dead. But if you come and lay hands on my daughter, she shall live. She shall live. And when the bad report came from, came from home, what did Lazarus, what did, what did Jesus, I mean, Jesus was standing there, bad news came, don't trouble not the master. Let's go home, let the child is dead, let's take care of all the rest of the matters concerning her funeral. But Jesus intervened and said to Jairus, fear not, only believe. I love these two words. Jesus said, fear not, only believe. And, and Jairus accepted Jesus instead of taking the bad report. He said, let's go. We're going to raise the dead up. We're going to raise the dead. You know, you can, dead, you can raise up many of your situations in your life by speaking forth words. Anytime. Because out of the abundance of your heart that your mouth needs to speak. Jesus said those words. Let's go to the book of Matthew. I almost said, let's go to the book of Jesus. Matthew. Okay. Because they're in red letters. Okay. In chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 34, let's read the latter part of it. For out of the mouth, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. What's in your heart comes out. What's, what have you premeditated? What's in your mind is going to come out of your mouth. You can just speak abundantly. When you sit with some people, they just speak revelation after revelation, after knowledge, after knowledge, and instruction after instruction, because that's in abundance. What's, 
What's in abundance in your heart? What's in abundance in your heart? Your mouth speaks. And verse 37 says, By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. By thy words thou shalt be justified, or thou shalt be condemned. But we would want to be condemned. It's all words that make the picture. It's all words that makes the picture. In Psalm 45 and verse number 1, it says, Your tongue is as a pen of a ready writer. Your tongue. Your tongue. You've got a skillful sway of speech. speech. I always declare this word and the Lord brings it to my mind. And, and, and in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse number 4, Isaiah 50 and verse number 4, there are some of the words that the Lord has been speaking to me and strengthening me. He says, uh, okay, let's go to that scripture, okay. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. We are the weary ones first. We got to know how to speak to ourselves. I use, that, I, I, I use that word very often. Even when I wake up, woke up this morning, it just came to my mind. I said, Lord, I thank you for giving me the tongue of the learned. I may not be too learned, but still for all, he has given me a tongue. That's good enough for me. Right? He has given me a tongue of the learned. How to speak a word in season to them that are weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear as a, uh, to hear as a learned person. I thank God for His words. He fills our mouth with good things. He fills our mouth with good things. Psalm 103. Let's go to Psalms 103. I'm just taking scriptures at random because, because we need to establish how important are words that come out of our mouth. Okay? And verse number 5 says, Who satisfied thy mouth with good things. That your youth is renewed like the eagles. What does he give us to our mouth? Words. Words. I know he gives all the good stuff for us to eat. We had some good meal. We had a good afternoon, spicy stuff today. I love good things. But then when it comes to words, it matters a lot. So he, he said, you want, to, you want to be strong and renewed like the eagles? He said, I satisfy your mouth. Although he satisfies our mouth, sometimes we just loosely do things. It's not very important for me. Everything that I do has to do with my words. Even before I see something, I got to speak it. I love to speak things. I like to believe for things. You see, you believe and, and, and you do things. Psalm, 100, uh, Psalm 84. Psalm 84. And... Uh, Okay, no, Psalm 81, I'm sorry. Psalm 81. Psalm 81 and verse number 10. And the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. It's talking about salvation. And I brought you out, and through the waters of baptism, through the Red Sea, I brought you out of Egypt. And I said, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But they didn't open their mouth wide. They just murmured and complained and murmured and complained and rebelled against his words. The Bible says in Psalm 106, you can read it sometime, they rebelled against his counsel. But my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would none, would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people, it's talking to us now, oh, my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel, and had, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies. You want all your enemies subdued soon? Speak the right word. It's one thing to read the scriptures 
It's another thing to declare the scriptures. It's a declaration of the scriptures that are important. I know this is the Logos, but when I start listening to, uh, reading the Logos and, and, and start believing it, these words would come out of the pages and I would immediately know, that's it, I got the word, I got it, I'm going to declare it. They got to open wide their mouth that I should have soon subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. God couldn't do anything because their words were stout against the Lord. It says in Malachi chapter 3 and uh, verse number 14 and 15, it says, their words were stout against me. Although they brought their tithes and their offerings unto me, and I called in that you shall be a blessed nation, but their words were stout against me. Well, let's read that. In Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 13. Your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken? So much against thee. And it continues. And, and, and they always complain and murmur. And I believe all our good works means nothing if our words are not going along with all our actions. Words mean a lot. I can do something, but I, 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 may, I may do something good, but eventually if I'm speaking the wrong words, I'm not going to get the good results. I believe words and actions, they go hand in hand. Words and actions, they go hand in hand. That they help you to go and, and be, be the people that you, God wants you to be. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, I'm just trying to get something into you and get these words into your heart because you will see great changes taking place in your personal life. You see this woman, the Shunammite, and she saw Elisha passing by and she said, this is a holy man. She went to the husband and said, I want to bless this man. I want to feed this man. Whenever he passes by, I want him to come have a cup of tea and let him rest for a while and go. And the next step she took was, she was so pleased about it. And she said, I'd like to make a little room in the corner of our uh, uh, house and then uh, let him come and even take rest. And then, and it so happened that the Shunammite, we find that she, uh, she was doing everything that was possible. She loved the man of God. She loved to serve the man of God. She did everything. And when the man of God turned around and, uh, and saw that she needed something, and he pronounced a blessing. Did she pro he pronounced, I'm sorry, he pronounced a blessing. And she couldn't, she couldn't fathom. She respected the man so much so, she said in, in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse number 14, and he said, what then is that is, what then is to be done for her? And Kehazi, his servant, answered, verily she has no child and her husband is old. That's a terrible situation. That was the same thing that happened to Zechariah when he was praying in the temple. And God spoke to him and said, you shall have a son. Oh, he said, no, I don't think I can believe that. The angel of the Lord shut his mouth. Your mouth is the biggest problem. Your mouth is the biggest problem. And he could not speak for the next nine months until the eighth day that the boy was circumcised. And he would have really got a message. He would have got a message. And she went to the man of God and, and, when, and, and the man of God called him and said, verse number 16, and, stood about, and about this time, according, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou art a man of God. Do not lie unto thine handmaid. But I know this was out of she was overjoyed. She didn't want the man of God to be called a liar. In fact, in, I, I believe this was actually overwhelming. She could not, she, with all reverence, she said, oh man of God, I did everything. 
I, I didn't expect anything from you in return, but I did everything under the Lord, I suppose she would have said. But according to the season, it's, it's, it took place. But she was a blessed woman. And thereafter, we find that the, the boy died. The boy died. And how did the boy die? Okay, well, verse number 18. And the child was born and the boy was grown. We don't know exactly how, the, what, how much uh, how, uh, kind of age this was. But the child was grown and in, it fell on a day that he went out of his house, out of his house, uh, uh, out to his father's, a uh, father to the reapers, and, and he said unto his father, my head, my head, and said to the lad, carry him to the mother. The fathers always say the mother is the prayer boy, prayer lady at home. Take the boy home. She will pray and get the boy raised or whatever, whatever. I mean, the, the child was almost dying. But well, okay, we'll read. And when he had taken, verse 20, when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, and he sat on her knees till noon and then died, what would you think she should do? The first thing is she should make a big noise and blame the husband. You should have not taken this boy to work today. Why did you do this, this, that, and the other? What did she do? She said, she, I mean, I'll just paraphrase the whole thing. She said, okay, send me a vehicle. I need to go and meet the man of God. And, and the husband said, well, what's, what's about it? Is it a holy day today? Why would you want to go and meet the man of God? What did she say? She knows that this boy is not breathing. This is a problem. This boy is not breathing and you don't even want to inform your husband. You want a vehicle to go to meet the man of God. You want to go, go to church on a, on a, when your boy is dead. You want to find the man of God who can agree with you and, and raise this boy from the dead. Well, she didn't even mention that to the husband. And she, and he said, wherefore wilt thou go, in verse 23, go to him today. It is neither full moon nor Sabbath. What was her answer? Oh, the boy is dead. You didn't know. You made a mess of this boy. We didn't have children for many years and you made a mess. You know, what is she, what is she saying? She said, it, well, the word it shall is added. It is in italics. But what did she say? Shalom. Everything is shalom. The boy is dead. But what did she say to the husband? Shalom. Everything is at peace. Everything is in order. How important are words? How important are words? And while she was going, the man of God saw her coming hastily, and we find that the servant was sent by the man of God and see what's, what's the problem. She, she's really troubled. And she knew that this man, I don't have to mention to this man, I got to go to the man of God, whom I can agree with. And when the servant came and asked in verse number 26, and she answered the same thing, Shalom. Everything is at peace. Everything is well. The child is doing well. And she went to the man of God, and the man of God said, Do you want me? I mean, he said, You have to come. You must come. Anyhow, the boy was raised, raised from the dead because of her words. You can change your situation in your home when you start speaking words differently to what you're going through in life. You can change your atmosphere. You can change your lifestyle. You can change the condition of your body. The Bible says in James chapter number 3 and verse number 2, we offend in many things. But we, if we offend not in word, we can bring our body under control. Let me take you to that scripture, James chapter number 3 and verse number 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able to bridle the whole body. 
You better start speaking to your body. You better start speaking to your body. It's important that you speak to your body. Every day I make, I make it a confession in my life. I say, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I'm healed. You kept me healed, Lord, from the head to the tip of my toe. You want to walk in health? Speak words over your body. Speak words over your body. Don't speak what you feel. Speak what you believe. Speak what you believe. It's not wrong. Because Joel 3.10 says, let the weak say that I am strong. It looks like a lie. But the word of the Lord says, let the weak say that I am strong. Don't confess your weakness. Don't declare your weakness. Don't talk your feelings. Talk your faith. Speak your words. Believe what God said in his word. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you're going through. It doesn't matter, but let's go to the word. And even if I have to go through any situation in my life, I'm going to still stand on the word and say, Lord, your word said it. Let the weak say that they are strong. Let the weak say that they are strong. Let the weak say that they are strong. Don't declare your weakness and don't brag about your weakness and don't tell everybody about how weak you feel. Go to somebody whom you can agree with. Would you agree with me in prayer? I'm going through this situation in my life. I want you to agree with me. And let's pray together. Go with somebody whom you can agree with. And he said, if two shall agree in touching anything, it shall be done of the Father. If two shall agree in, uh, in, in anything, it shall be done. So what do I agree with? I agree with God's word. This man of God who stood on the word of God, literally, he was going through cancer and he was only given three months to live. And he literally got the Bible, took off his shoes and stood on the word. And he said, Lord, if I die, I die on this word. And I believe that you have healed me. And for... 70 long, or probably since then, he has been preaching for the last 45 years, and he's still very much alive. When the doctor said he's not going to live for the next three, six months, he, it, it wouldn't take even three months. If he lives for three months, it's great. But he lived because of his declaration. He said, if I live, I live on this word. If I die, I'll stand on this word and die. And when I come to heaven, I'll say, Lord, I stood on your word, and I'm with you right now. Stand on his word. It says, James goes on. I mean, James being, being the half-brother of Jesus, he explains things so beautifully. I like the way he explains things. So practical. In verse number three, it says, Behold, we put a bit in a horse's mouth that he may obey us. I mean, and then it says, We turn about the whole body by a bit. A forceful, strong animal able to control by his mouth. So it said, Behold, also the ships, verse number four, which though they be so great, are driven with fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem or a rudder, whithersoever the governor listeth. And then it goes on down the line and it says, even so, the tongue, which is a small member, which is a little member, and boasted of great things. Your tongue is as a bit, horse's bit. Your tongue is as a rudder. Your tongue is as a rudder. The psalmist declared this psalm and said, I shall, and he was going through pressure. So much of pressure. He declared and he said, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I believe it's Psalm 117 and verse 18 or something along there. And I shall declare. And he, and he made a declaration. He said, death, you have no life over my body. You have no right over my body. I'm going to declare the works of God. I've had several symptoms coming over my body and I feel like, oh, I'm just going to end up in life. I'm just, I'm, there are times that I've had this situation that I've come. I said, Lord, I thank you. 
I couldn't even breathe. So at one particular place, a time I remember long years back, I couldn't even breathe. I was almost, I said, I mean, in my mind, I thought I won't live. But I said, Lord, I thank you. I couldn't even utter my words out. Words never came out of my mouth. I found it so difficult at this particular time. I'm talking about a testimony. I have several testimonies to give you. But I had this particular testimony. It was between life and death that I was at midnight. And that can be a midnight hour in your life. And you might, you might wonder, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I started, I said, Lord, I thank you. I, I, I never come, I said, I said, Lord, I thank you. And all of a sudden I started, and I saw, I, I heard a song. I, saw, I heard a song, my, my spirit singing out of me. I heard a song coming out of my spirit. I, started, I heard this song coming out of me. because I have, I've been singing this song for a while. I mean, a, a confession can come out of even a song. That's how important songs are to us. That's how important even songs are. And I started singing this song for a while, and all of a sudden I found myself free. I found myself free. In, in the book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 25, we, f- we find that Paul and Silas, they ended up in the dungeon, in the inner dungeon. And they were in trouble, really. And they prayed and never... Um, I suppose, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just imagining. I, took, I could think. At midnight, they got a revelation at midnight. The Bible says at midnight, they prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord, and suddenly there was an earthquake which shook the very foundations of the, earth, of, of the prison, and they were let loose. I believe when we pray, we got to thank God and start singing praises. Thank you, Lord. I believe that your words are true, and your words can never be changed. I'm going to close with one more scripture. Uh, from the book of, I'm going to close with this scripture in the book of, uh, in, in, in Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. And God took Ezekiel in the spirit and he took him to a high place and he brought him to an open valley. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse number 2. And caused me to pass by them and uh, around them Okay, I will read from verse number one. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me <coughs> down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them about, round about, and behold, there were very Many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. They were very dry. And the word is talking about bones that were in the valley, and they were very dry. And the word dry there means they were ashamed, they were disappointed. And they were in confusion. That's the word dry means. Because this is talking about an army. And they needed to hear. They needed somebody to prophesy over them. And, and the Lord spoke to Ezekiel and said, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. I mean, you see a situation and you say, Oh my God. And God is asking, what do you think about this? Can these bones live? Only you know, Lord. Again, he said unto me, prophesy. That word prophesy means one of the meanings, a few meanings there. It means to speak, to sing, to prophesy, to play the madman. That's what we need to do when it comes to situations when we are disappointed when we are confused, and when we are in right places, and we have nothing to do, we just got to play the madman over my life. Prophesy over your life. 
Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Encourage yourselves. Speak the word of God over your life. Don't let the devil just trouble you. You cannot defeat a thought with another thought. Always keep in mind, you're going through a thought in your mind. You try to defeat your thoughts by other thoughts. But you can always defeat a thought only by the words that come out of your mouth. You can only defeat thoughts that are running in your mind by the words, by the words that come out of your mouth. Words that come out of your mouth. You better make up your mind to speak the right word and see the change taking place in your life entirely. Because your words are important. God can work with your words. Satan can work with your words. When you, when you speak the wrong words, I believe the, angel of the angels of the Lord and say, oh my God, this man is not speaking the word. They only hearken to the voice of God. Psalm 103 and verse number 20, I believe. Angels hearken to the voice of God. Is that right? Is that the right scripture? Let me just go to that scripture. Psalm 103, I believe, and verse number 20. Yeah, that's right. Bless the Lord, Psalm 103 and verse 20. Yea, he is angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So if you give him no words, how can angels work for you? How can angels work for you? If you're going to speak defeat, when we're supposed to be speaking victory, how can the angels help us out? They only hearken to the voice of his word. So what do we do with these? I mean, this is not to puff up our minds. These words, oh, I'm, ah, I know the word. Well, if you know it, put it to work by your words. Put it to work by your words. Let those words come out of you. Now, I can have a lot of knowledge, but knowledge puffs up. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 1 says, Knowledge puffs a person up, but love builds. Who is love? God. God's word. You, you, can, you can see different. You know, God and his word are inseparable. God's word builds you up, strengthens you. Angels are waiting for the, they are, they are, they are, they are ministering spirits. They are waiting to minister to us. And demons are waiting. Their they are, they are guns, I suppose, they are empty. They don't know how to get you. But if they can get you to stumble, it, say, it says in Proverbs chapter number 6 and verse 2, it says, it says don't be entangled or, or don't, 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 don't get trapped. Don't, be, don't stumble yourself by the words that come out of your mouth. Don't stumble. You, you can stumble by the words that come out of your mouth. And, 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 and if you can make up your mind and say, I'm going to go home and see the words that I have been uttering. Or get a recorder and put it in your pocket and just check out for the little time that you're walking around and the words that you speak. Hard, difficult, problem. Too much. I can't bear it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost blown off. Why do we speak though? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm almost about to be blown off. Well, that's not the word of the Lord. You may have pressure, but take the word of God and speak the word instead of speaking your pressure. Instead of speaking pressure, speak the word of God. Thou art snared, in Proverbs 6 and verse 2 says, Thou art snared by the words of thy mouth. You're snared by the words. You're trapped just like a bird is trapped by the words. We are trapped by the words. Let's declare something good over our lives. Let's learn to speak differently because words matter. We live in a world of words. We live in a world of words. Let the weak say that I'm strong. There are plenty more, plenty of scriptures that we can go into. And, and, and Ezekiel, it's a wonderful example of Ezekiel. You shall speak. And as you start speaking, we begin to see things changing. As he begins to speak, now he was speaking over, as the Lord pro prophesied over him and told him to prophesy or speak, speak words or play the mad man. 
And how do I play the madman? I just go around saying, I thank you, Lord. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. I'm the head and not the tail. While I'm really going through some pressure time, I'm playing the madman. I'm, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and on, I'm not the head. Whatsoever I place my hands upon, it shall prosper. I thank you. I'm playing the madman. But I'm declaring his word. And his words will never return unto him void. It is sent to accomplish the purpose for which it was sent for. I play the madman. People say, I'm mad, it's okay. I don't care what they say, but I'm going to play the madman. I play the madman. You get yourself prayed, and I, I'm going through some situation. Would you pray for me? And, and, and the preacher prays for you and says, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your blessing over this child. And, and Lord, bless this family, Lord. And, bless. and the next thing, you just go and utter something contrary to what you have already prayed and agreed with. How would, how would God be able to do something? I pray one thing, but I declare something different. Oh, I'm still going through problems. I may go to several preachers with all my prayers, but if I don't know how to control my tongue, I'm still going to stay the same. If I prayed, I just need to say I believe that I received it, and I thank you, Lord, I believe that I received it. Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Mark chapter, 16, Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, it says, believe that you receive them. 24, 11 and verse 24. Whatsoever things you desire, whatsoever thing you desire, according to the word of God, according to the will of God, according to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14, it says, it says, whatsoever things you desire, according to the scriptures, not just as, as I declared in the morning, where you just don't go around laying hands on things and saying, Lord, this, this is my car. I lay hands on this car. Lord, speak to this man that he may deliver this car to my home free of charge. No. You can just look to the Lord and say, Lord, I love this car, but I thank you. And I come to you, Lord, if this is your will, Lord, that I should have this. And Lord, you can provide for me. I mean, we don't do mad things, but we play the madman by our words, by declaring every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus. That's the first scripture that we saw in Philemon, verse 6. Declaring every good thing. Let the communication of your faith be energized. Let the communication of your faith be effectual by the declaring or, or by, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is already in you. Do you have? Is Christ in you the hope of glory? Is the greater one dwells in you? He says, I can, do, I can do even more than you could ask or think. I think we got to, we got to make our vision big and say, Lord, I could, I could believe in you according to Ephesians 3 and verse 20, you said in your word, if I, if I need to believe those, even those things more than I declare or more than I, 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 I think he can do. How much more? How much more? We need to place ourselves in a position and say, Lord, I'm willing to play the madman. I don't care what people say, but I'm willing to play the madman. But eventually, the ones who think that you're playing the madman are going to be so disappointed because you're going to be up and they're going to still be down there. Because the greater one dwells in you than he that is in the world. And he's going to see those words coming to pass. Because, because what's, my reading the word means I got to put the word to work in my life. By character and by action, I declare it. God said, you, your, your name is Abraham, that's not good enough. You've got to make it Abraham, father of many nations. You're not just a father, but a father of many nations. And Abraham, he's today still the father of many nations. Every child who gets born into the family of God, that's the seed. That's, the, that's what God has already pronounced over him. And that's how things are taking place today. Every, every child who was born again gets born where we become the seed of Abraham. Cedar. I mean, Abraham is still producing children. That's God's, that's God's way of doing things. His words, his words mean a lot to us. 
His word. I mean, the greatest thing I would say, the fear of the Lord means highly reverence His word. There's another scripture in the book of Proverbs. You could go home and read it sometime. It's in Proverbs. It says in, uh, let your, teach your tongue what to speak. Or glue the word of God in your tongue. He, st- he also spoke to Joshua and said, Joshua, Moses is dead now. Don't think about Moses. He's gone. I'm talking to you the same way that I protected and guarded Moses. I'm going to protect you and God as long as you heed to those voices. And let this word not depart out of your mouth. Let this word be in your mouth. Nothing else but this word. Let this word be declared out of your mouth. It's nice to converse his word, his language. I mean, there's more than enough for us to declare. Confess every good thing that you have in Christ Jesus because he's faithful. Hebrews, it tells us he is faithful. And he is faithful. He is, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 says, confess, speak his word over your life. It's good. Instead of speaking what the devil says over your life, when the devil says you're broke, say, no, devil, I'm not broke. I believe God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why would I want to declare what the devil says? The devil keeps telling me, you're broke. You're broke? I said, no, you are broke, not me. Jesus broke you on the cross and made you and, and, and put you to shame. He, I love the scripture. Know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet, yet, yet for your sakes, Second Corinthians 8 and verse 9, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might receive his abundance or be made rich. Declare something good. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let your words of life penetrate through the hearts and lives of these dear ones. The Lord, that they would know for sure, each and every one of them, that the eyes of their understanding be open and the ears be open, that they may know the riches that you have for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you said, declare every good thing, communicate every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Say the word. Speaking the word makes the difference in your life. Let the weak say that I'm strong. Let the weak say that I'm strong. You don't have to go around declaring your weakness to people. and Let everybody in town know that you're so weak and at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word be established as the word says in 2 Corinthians 13, 1. We got to, we got to confess every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus. Let us draw nigh unto God and speak what He wants us to speak because He rejoices. He rejoices over us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's make this declaration before we go into worship. Say, Father, I thank you for your words of life. You said we are children. And Lord, we thank you. We receive every good thing that you have for us. You said if we ask for, a, if we ask for bread, we don't get a rock from you. Lord, if we ask for, a, for an egg, we don't get a scorpion. Lord, if we ask for fish, we don't get a serpent. Lord, we thank you. 
for your words are life unto us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We believe your words are true. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As Peter said, if you desire to see good days, let there be good words coming out of your mouth. If you desire to see good days in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9, if you want to see some good days, let your words be true.